I'm going to show you how to make sprites grow and shrink in a pulsing pattern like this, and I'm going to show you how to make a block that will do this for you. We're starting here with a gem in its original size, a scale of 1, but I want to make it smaller and then make it grow to this size. So as a starting, I'll set it at a quarter of its original size, 0.25, and now I'm going to make it grow up until size 1. To grow, we can just use the counter pattern where you say scale equals scale plus 1. One's going to be growing way too quickly, so let's set it to 100. So every tick of the draw loop, it'll grow by 1, 100. And now what we need to do is figure out a way to make it stop growing when it reaches the size that we want. We'll take an if, and we'll say only grow if its size is less than 1. So it's going to grow, and once it reaches the size of 1, we can stop it. Now let's change that to maybe half, so it'll stop a little sooner. So that's a way to stop it from growing. First, I'll comment this if out so we can try something else. And now I'm going to show you how to make it shrink. Now the problem with shrinking, this time I'm going to need a background. The problem with shrinking is if you get less than zero, it's going to invert the image as you're seeing here. So let me start it big. I started at size two and you can watch it shrink down. But still, when its scale gets less than zero, it flips and starts growing in the negative dimension. So we need to make that not happen. And to do so, we'll say only grow if it's bigger than zero, if the scale is bigger than zero. So when it shrinks down to, to nothing, it will stay gone. Okay, so that's the other side of the coin. We've made it grow until it reached a certain size and then stopped growing. And now we've made it shrink until it's reached a certain size and stopped shrinking. But now we need to consider how can we make it do both? How can we make it grow to a certain size and then shrink to a certain size? To do that, we're going to need a helper variable to tell whether we're growing or shrinking. So I'm going to make a variable called grow, put it on line one and set it to true. And then I'm going to need another couple of ifs. This first one I'm going to say, if grow is true, then we're going to make our scale increase. So we're going to reuse what we had before. And then I'm going to say, if the scale is less than zero, meaning if my my gem has gotten to the size of zero to set grow to true, so that he'll do that. And now I'm going to have another condition that says, I'm going to say if the size of the gem gets larger than one, set grow to false. And if grow triple equal false, then shrink it again. Let's just pause it right here for a second and talk about what's going on. We have two conditions, and we have this helper variable. So. Either the gem is so small that you can't see it, it has a scale of zero, or it's as big as we want it to get at one. If it gets down to its smallest state, we want it to grow, so we set grow to true. And if grow is true, then we want it to grow by 0.01. If it gets to its largest state here, we're going to set grow to false. And if grow is set to false, then we want it to shrink, so minus 0.01. All right, let's continue. And now we can see we have it pulsing. I'm going to rename this Sprite Pulse, and then I'm going to move it over to a corner so we can do something else. All right, so now I'm going to make it pulse a little faster by lowering the, the largest size that it can get to because I want to scoot it over and stick it in a corner. I'm constraining it on the top and the bottom to make it look more pulsing. And now I'm just going to stick it down here in the corner the reason I'm doing that is I want to make room for other sprites on the screen. So I've got all this code in my draw loop to make this thing pulse. And it would just be a little more organized if I could get that out of there. And I wish I had a block called pulse. So I'm going to make one. Down here below the draw loop, I'm going to comment this out and call it pulse. So that later on I'll remember what I'm doing. And I'm going to call this new block pulse. And then I'm going to take these four ifs that I used to make it pulse and drag them down out of the draw loop into this new function. And now that I have it created, I can just make a block called pulse. And just checking to make sure that it didn't break anything. So what's happening here is every time that the computer gets to this block, it jumps down and runs all this code right here, and then it jumps back to the next spot. And now that I have this function working, uh, and I've done it once, I could do it another time. The only thing is, let me pause this video, the only thing is, 
inside of my function I've used the word gem. So right now it's only going to work for gem because I've got gem in here everywhere. So what I'm going to do is make it more generic so that it can work for other functions as well. I'll change all of the gems to sprite and I'm going to add a parameter right there. Everywhere I had gem before I'm changing it to sprite and that way it will be able to work for other sprites as well. And I have to add that same parameter here. So now, whenever the computer sees Jim as this parameter of the pulse function, it comes down to this function and replaces the word sprite here, here, and here, and here, all the way down with whatever word I gave it, which is Jim in this case. And now I can make another sprite, and I'll fast forward so you don't have to see all this. So I've got another sprite named Sun, and now that I have this function that works for anything with the generic sprite name, I can pulse anything. And I could even add a whole lot of these guys. 